what's going on everybody? It's Donnie. Alright, so this is um, Victorian and the Greyjoys Part 3. Um, there's probably going to be a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of these. I can't sum any of these people up in, in one video. I mean, possibly, but I really don't have that kind of time and neither do you. Uh, I don't want to go into any more... Um, well, right now, uh, I don't, I don't want to tell you something you you basically already know. I I want to basically pick up a little bit right before the end of Victorian's story in you know A Dance with Dragons. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of the events on his way to Marine, and then I want to talk about what is or at least what what I think is going to happen. Or we're we're going to go over a a few different things that could happen. First off, I want to talk about uh, the Dusky Woman. I think it's safe to say that I have no fucking clue who she is at all. You know, I've, I've had a couple people, you know, ask me, like, hey, who do you think the Dusky Woman is? I'm like, I have no idea. But um, the, the cool thing that I picked up uh, about her is uh, when, you know, Murakuo is inside of, you know, Victorian sh chambers and he is doing whatever he did to his hand, uh, you hear uh, a high-pitched singing in Old Valerian. And Maester Kerwin even acknowledges that, you know, on deck with, with the other Ironborn. So uh, I was thinking maybe it would be cool that somehow in this little uh, ritual, I, I don't know if you want to call it a ritual or, or whatever Murakuo is, is doing inside of his cabin with, with everything going on in, in the magic and whatnot, uh, imagine her uh, tongue getting healed during this and maybe she's just singing. Like, we don't know where she's from. Uh, she could be... You know, she could know old Valyrian. Euron's traveled everywhere. You know, he could he could have picked her up wherever. And so, I, I was thinking it it would just be cool if if it was her that you know that she was uh, singing during that little ceremony. Um, I also want to talk about how uh, some people say that uh, Victorian may be dead or at least no longer human. It's very possible. I don't think that he's dead. I was talking to a friend and they said why would why would they put Vic in Murakuo's, you know, visions just for him to go there and die? I, I don't think it was that that simple at all. Um, we see Victorian get flesh made fire and that's that's kind of unique. Uh, N nothing else has has ever happened like that you know we we have the shadow babies you know you know like just just really cool stuff these these people can see into the fire and predict things see the future uh sometimes things just show up in their vision Murakuo had visions of victoria why would he just roll up there and, and just kill him uh so i started thinking about that i was like well yeah, uh, what if uh, the Iron Fleet is a solid way, you know, to get Murakuo to seek out Danny, you know, or at least get him to uh, Marine? You know, it's a very logical. He could just hitch a ride, and and maybe you know, Vic during this little process was just a a, a thrall. So um, that's uh, I was just trying to think about it from from all different angles. Um, if okay, even even if he is dead or alive you know um maybe he's no longer human it's well do you do you guys consider the uh the white walkers you know or others or whites the the white whatevers whatever you want to call them you know uh do are are they still human you know so like uh you you have the great other that is able to uh reanimate <clears throat> at, at least dead people we don't have a solid proof of where the others are generated from you know um everybody yeah i, I like uh the craster baby thing you know um but at that point you have a bunch of little adolescent white walkers and that doesn't make a lick of sense either why not if if this red god is battling the the great other light and darkness and you know um uh, why why is it why why can't the the red god Relor what why can't he take his element fire and reanimate you know people 
so basically if you have the ice people over here and the fire people over here and they're literally like humanoids and one's ice and one's fire i mean that that would be pretty cool you, you could have you know this army over here and this army over here or my favorite theory is after victorian goes and kills everybody and takes all the dragons he just flies up to the wall and the dragon just drops him off and he just punches all the white walkers in the face is fast and as hard as he can every single one of them roll credits i love that one that's 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 my favorite <laughs> all right let's let's get some of the bullshit crackpot out of the way i'm sorry i'm sorry um you know like we we see in the uh, oh spoiler alert if you haven't seen or heard the um um sample chapters if you haven't read them uh i want to talk about the sample chapters you know uh after Victorian had seized the noble lady, um, took the most beautiful women in the world, set them on a boat, like, like a little bitty boat, and like pushed them out to the sea, set them on fire, and then he drowned them. So that, that's pretty awesome. And at this point, Vic, in in my head, he's he's got uh, two different gods, you know, on his side, and he's he's already got his uh, little lava fist too. And uh, Merc was in full swing at this point. Uh, he's changed his robes. He wound up looking ten times more sinister than he originally did when they found him. Vic gave him his own robes. Both gods on his side, he's got the noble lady, and they pack all the ironborn inside of the noble lady, and they just run into the marine, you know, with uh, all the other fishing, you know, vessels and whatnot, straight up Trojan horse style, and at that point, uh, Sir Barristan is you know, riding down on the young guy, and he's got his knights with him that he's trained, and the Unsullied are running around, and the Ironborn just smashed, uh, you know, the, the youngest soldiers. So, at this point, in my head, there was a lot of different things that, that could happen at this point. And mind you, uh, people are all like, you know, oh, Danny this, Danny that, you know. Um, last we saw Danny, she was, uh, dying in the desert basically so we don't know what she's you know go, gonna wind up doing out there it's like she's not even in town everybody's in town there for for danny she's not even there we'll talk about danny later at this point we have sir barristan the bold coming face to face more or less with victoria and Greyjoy, e even on the battlefield that that quick i i think it, w it would be safe to say that that they're gonna see each other it's just, just feeling of mine. So, we also have a sample chapter of Sir Barristan the Bold uh, giving a speech before this, you know, battle and everything. It was it was an awesome speech uh, that he gave his men. So, wouldn't it be a, a little bit ironic if if he gave this really big speech and somehow, let's say either a it's the Ironborn versus the Unsullied and Sir Barristan the Bold and Victorian go head to head or um victorian just decides to you know fight him and it's just one on one um and sir barristan uh challenges him you know if victorian is you know coming there to marry danny and steal the dragons which we'll talk about that a little bit later too so what if uh that that big speech that sir barristan gave was you know him right before he died and what what if uh victorian killed him and uh i don't know why i i keep thinking that you know i don't want to think that like sir barristan is like you know the the one of the two maybe three characters that is like actually really good you know like he good guy he's very honorable you know and stuff like that he's he's not out to to get you or, or stab you in the back you know so i i don't want him to die everybody likes sir barristan the bold you know, um, but it, I was just thinking with the release of his sample chapter, you know, it being all really dramatic and, and stuff like that, that speech, I was like, ah, oh, man, damn it, George, like, you're about to kill him, aren't you? You know, so, all right, so either A, he kills Sir Barristan and Victorian takes his place, blah, blah, blah. So, um, the, the next thing is Victorian you know, tell Sir Barristan, because, I mean, they're, they're going to be familiar with each other, you know, um, they, 
they both have been around for a while. They remember this rebellion and, and that rebellion. And, uh, hey, remember when I tried, you know, <laughs> to to take over Westeros? Ha, ha, ha. I got my butt kicked, you know. But um, Sir Barristan is going to be able to confirm, you know, to Danny. See, like, Danny somehow got back in town. I don't even know how. So he, he could tell Danny that, yeah, Victorian is who he says he is and he just showed up with all these ships and um she's gonna see kind of uh his his prowess you know he he's a very tall man victorian is is a big dude you know and he's a badass and i he's he's got the lava fist and i i think she might grow to like him and i also think we might see a different side of victorian when if this goes down this way you know, we might see a different side of Victorian and, and Danny with everything that happened with his wife and Euron. You know, Victorian might have a little soft side to him, though. But I, he he is Ironborn through and through, so that's that's a toss up right there. Victorian resembles a little bit of Cal Drogo. You know, just uh, physical characteristics and and things of that nature. So I I think she might be a little bit attracted to that as well. Uh, and he did show up with a bunch of ships like a whole bunch of ships there's transportation it's you know danny could weigh her options of things and then all of a sudden now uh she had a dragon that came into town burned people you know killed tons of people she had to freaking go in there and get lit up by fire herself and and roll out on his back and then the other two are like roaming around town right now you know just just being little wild children so if if this hellhorn or you know dragon binder whatever if it actually works she could have a firm grasp on her dragons you know and i i was never here to say that victorian's gonna ride a dragon i don't see that happening i i see it as a kind of a offering i i guess it, it, if you want to go down the road that you know they're um there, he's actually might have a chance with you know getting with Danny you know so she she could find that a very acceptable you know thing and, and actually start to like him and, and be like this guy can actually bring some stuff to the table you know to to help me you know and then so he could take her home you know and then who knows what the hell would happen over on Westeros uh, so also we we have the other you know, aspect that, what well, what if he blew that damn horn? You know, I mean, like, he's not going to do it. And um, Miracle even said that he didn't have to. So he concocted this plan that he's going to have this guy, that guy, and this other guy each take a turn blowing the horn. And he, he bound the, the horn to him with his blood. And Miracle told him to do so. Uh, I believe Miracle at this point, he's been more accurate than Melisandre. Uh, he really has I, even though he hasn't had as much time you know in, in the story he's actually proven himself he and he's he's a very 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 powerful red priest uh, that that's also another selling point to Danny you know uh, Murkwo is Vix at this point right hand man you know Murkwo has even witnessed Vic sacrificing people to his red gods and thanks for coming by my channel I really appreciate it um I'm working on this stuff all the time, and I'll see you later. Thanks. Oh, and um, by the way, uh, part four will be um, Victorian and what happens if he does blow the horn and has control of the dragons or what would happen with the dragons. So um, stay tuned. Bear with me. And uh, tons of other stuff coming. Promise. Bye.